Uh, unlike our, our first uh, speakers, I've actually been preparing for months on, on this moment on stage. Um, so 2005, um, I had this incredible opportunity to design all new high schools in the Cayman Island. You know, beyond the fact that it was a, an incredible place to work, um, this, this system was trying to sort of reinvent itself. And I thought that, you know, this moment was sort of a capstone uh, in my career after 20-something years of designing schools until I met this guy. Uh, Professor Heppel um, was also brought in from the UK. And he challenged me from day one, um, something that's, that's just really a remarkable challenge is that uh, kind of pulled me over and said, Lee, um, I need you to design this school without any corridors, and I want you to sort of re-envision the classroom. And I think for me, it was, was not so much about trying to tackle this idea of, of wasted corridor space, was that he was trying to make cultural change. He was trying to make behavioral change. And I think for me, that was this rabbit hole that pulled me into kind of a pause in my career to a certain extent and kind of rethink um, the architectural process in terms of what we were doing, the environment we were designing, especially for learning. You know, this led to a whole year research that ended up in a collaboration with Bruce Mao that resulted in this publication and ultimately became this kind of active think tank of the group that I run right now, which is the Third Teacher Plus. So we, we tried to really tackle this idea of the classroom, right? I mean, as, 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 as soon as you hear the word classroom, um, I think that all of you has an image in your head of what it, what it looks like, what it feels like, what the environment tends to um, asking you an expectation in terms of how you should behave and what, what is that social and human interaction look like. Interestingly enough, in 2009, there was this remarkable photographer from, from England, Julian Germain, that spent an entire year traveling around the world taking photographs, what she called the classroom portrait project. Right? It's, it struck me that no matter where she was at, what country, culture, what subject was being taught in these classrooms, at the core of it, the environment is exactly the same everywhere around the world, right? We have institutionalized this idea of the classroom as the place to learn. So I spent a lot of my time kind of a deep search in terms of what is the next version as teachers and educators trying to revolve learning forward. You know, how do, we, how do we go from this double-loaded corridor planning party, which is really the means in which we've been designing schools for the last 200 years? How do we start to deconstruct that? And every school that I walked in, there's a mission statement that said that we want our students to be critical thinkers, right? To ask questions, to be curious, to be discoverers, and to have that greater sense of joy well, how can the environment be emblematic to that goal? How can it literally change itself to create different human relationships, to create new behaviors, to generate different expectation about what that environment should look like? This is one of our projects um, in Turkey. Um, this is an enormous opportunity for us to deliver the model school for the entire country um, at the middle school levels. So the architectural project, project for us is not so much the object itself, but it's allowing this entire system to really ask very serious questions, one of which is, why do so many girls drop out of school after eighth grade? So it's no longer an architectural project. It is a cultural project. So I, I come here today with, with these three things. Uh, there are certain things that we're very curious about, and there are certain things that we have a bias toward. And our bias is design. Our bias is design thinking. Our, our, our bias is about placing the human being and relationship back in the center of everything that we create from now on. And how do we achieve that global planetary balance as we start to re-envision our physical environment? And lastly, there's a, there's a formulation in terms of what that, what that thesis is beginning to look like. So this is a pretty funny cartoon, unless you, you see it from the perspective of a dad, which, which is what I am. And I have four kids, and two of which I think they're monkeys, and the other two are certainly a, they're fish, right? 
And, and so the, the measurement of success of our system right now is very much test-based. I think all of you have sort of felt that in your entire career, and certainly for me as well. It's a great quote by Einstein, that if we judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, you know, there's, there's some serious aspect in terms of where we go from, from this point on moving forward. This could literally be a visual way in which we've been program, programming schools, right? And us as human beings really hate uncertainty. So everything that we do is about making things really neat, organize it into simple little containers. And yet, if you look at the bottom pictures, the global world is about this complexity. And once you embrace this complexity, you can see the beauty within it. It's a great article recently, a conversation between Friedman, who's the author of The, of the World is Flat, with Tony Wagner. Um, and, and Tony Wagner said that, I feel like I'm a translator between two hostile tribes, the education world and the business world, the world, the people who teach our kids and the people who give them jobs. And yet I think that there is a third tribe swarming. And this third tribe is like this, this murmuration. This is an image of starlings, thousands of them in, in synchronicity, dancing across the skies in constant communication with each other. And as amazingly of complex this, this system is, is literally on the tip of transformation, operate with very simple rules. So with that, there, there's kind of the thesis that I'm forming. There's a sense of empowerment, and you actually, you actually can see that from the, our two previous speakers, the sense of empowerment. Self-organized, that leads to emergence. Power by technology, right? It's this incredible ability for all of us to connect and form communities that leads to a complete transformation. And transformation is not a simple word. Transformation is going from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Right? That is not a simple thing. That is a drastic, major, massive shift. So empowerment. One of the places in Stanford right now that is drawing students into is this place called the D School. And it's drawing students from all across the universities, from all disciplines, into this place. And the value proposition is they get no credit or a degree from finishing this course at, at the D School. But what they're armed with is this empowerment to authentically change the world, like saving thousands of, of babies that are born prematurely in Nepal. And an 18-year-old is giving a platform to talk about how can we go about cleaning our oceans. Self-organized. I met with a group of students um, at Stanford and RISD Again, is this, this, this urgency to make an impact right now before graduation, adding on top of it a certain sense of being uninspired by their higher ed, higher ed experience. And also, it's not, it's not just the older um, students, it's even the younger ones. Design for Change activate 30 million students, middle school, middle school students in 30 countries organizing themselves and how to make their community better. It's the fact that how can I live the life of a child laborer in India and then go to the factory owner and confront that factory owner about employing children. And self-organized doesn't have to be sort of this long, long-term infrastructure. It could be sort of a pop-up 24-hour hackathon to really tackle challenging problems. And lastly, that leads to emergence. So we're starting to see some really amazing thing happening in terms of how communities come together to really tackle this, this, this sense of, of the, the, the problems that we're facing in the world. Hub is one of those organizations. It's really kind of a global, global network that comes together to form this, this organization. And if anybody asks me what does the future of learning look like, it tends to look like this. Incredibly dynamic, incredibly connected, global, cultural, power by technology in terms of connection. And there's also a business model, there's also an economy happens behind this that allows 12 designers in San Francisco to raise enough money to compete against Microsoft and Sony that leads to transformation, right? 
just a few months ago, so Greta Mitra won the TED Prize to start to implement his, his model of self-organized learning environment. It's a simple idea is that how can we arm a group of eighth graders with technology, the connection to the global world and knowledge, give them really authentic, hard questions that they have to tackle, and the teacher steps back, reinforce with, pop, with, with positive um, guidance, and transition, constantly transition from asking how to asking why. And then edX certainly is, is, is interesting because typically the leading institution tends to get broadsided by innovation. But here, the leading institution is leading that disruptive change. As previous speakers said, if the content at Harvard and MIT is putting online for free, what's the value of going to Harvard and MIT? It certainly is not about the content anymore. It must be the experience. It must be the social capital behind it. So moving forward, if that could be replaced by this interconnected world that we live in, what is the true value of going to higher education? So I think that there's a shift happening with us and it's perfectly exemplary of this quote, that the 20th century is maybe preparing our students for task. But the 21st century is about recognizing and allowing our students to see just the immensity of the sea, the complexity of the world that they're about to go into, and the enormous amount of opportunity to make a greater change within it. Thank you.